Hello and welcome to the Four Hammer Podcast, episode 103. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? We have an important episode this week. <laughs> Not an exciting one. <laughs> I need to be serious so that people know that I'm actually legit this time. We're covering Space Marine sub-factions, and I'm not going to be forced to do it by the patrons where I'm being jokey the whole time and doing it half as a roast. We're going to have a serious discussion about Space Marine chapters for sub-factions and all of that nonsense. All together, nice and official, all questions you could have as a new player, totally solved. That's the plan anyway. We'll see what happens. Sounds good. All right, so to start things off, let's talk about what chapters are, how they compare to sub-factions. Let's do a nice blanket reminder to paint your models however the hell you want. And Eric's probably going to ask me a bunch of lore stuff because I'm sure he didn't do his reading before this episode started. No, in fact, it's the exact opposite. I did do my reading and there's a bunch of lore questions. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get to those two, but I guess let's flounder our way through some lore and then we'll start talking about how the lore matches rules and why you may want to play each of the current sub-factions in 10th edition. And if you want a more lore-oriented breakdown for, like, the actual Space Brain chapters, we have that video we did during 9th edition a year ago. And it hasn't really changed? Yeah, the lore parts of it hasn't really changed. I am a snarky asshole through the whole thing, but, well, I just think making fun of Space Marines is an important important part of this hobby. Fair enough, fair enough. But 10th edition changed a lot of stuff with how sub-factions work for the better. Yeah, it's honestly, 10th edition has changed a lot of stuff, but Space Marines is drastically different. Yes, it's more that Space Marines is now what they've always tried to say, but then half-assed and didn't really go through with. So let's talk as though our audience is a new player looking to get into Space Marines and is very confused as to how do I paint my guys so that I don't end up forced to play a way I don't want or which chapter is right for me. All of the basic level questions someone new may have. So first of all, fear not how you paint your Marines. That is a nice and easy, you're covered. Whatever makes you happy, paint them that way. And I still would have argued that was the way it was before and always has been. We said it last time, but GW has very clearly made it so this time. The sub-factions for Space Marines are no longer named after chapters. They have have generic silly stupid names that we'll talk about how stupid those names are but it's very <laughs> nice that they are not the chapter names so you no longer get made fun of for having the wrong colored space marine who is a blue iron hands or something you don't have to care about that anymore right okay since we're framing this as a new player getting into space marines what is the difference between chapter and sub faction sub factions are generic term for what in 10th edition is called detachments it is the variety with in your faction where you can choose to play differently game to game, list to list. Yeah, it lets you kind of customize your list a little bit. Yeah, if you're in a tournament, you're locked to one for the whole tournament, but you get the point. 99.9% .9 of people out there, they'll never see one anyway. Game to game, you can change out your list, your sub-faction, and play different ways within your faction. They are called detachments in 10th edition, whereas in 9th edition, every single different faction called them different things, which is why we called them sub-factions, so that we would have a general term. Yeah, because Space Marine chapters didn't really make any sense for Necrons. Yeah, Necrons had dynasties, which is one of my favorites. So in 10th, we can now choose a sub-faction and we can choose a chapter. Yes, and the only thing that your chapter choice locks you to, and it's a temporary locking, when you make a list in 10th edition, as a Space Marine player, you can choose to give it a chapter name. If you choose Ultramarines because you decided you wanted to play with Rabute Gilliman's model or Man Anius Kalgar's model or whatever. Or I just like the toilet bowl. Yeah. You are now locked to Ultramarines. You cannot then add Lionel Johnson or something. You are now Ultramarines. You cannot add a Dark Angel. You could, in your paint scheme you come up with, buy all the named characters you want from any chapter and it doesn't matter. Paint them up how you want and then you can still play them. But you can only play one chapter's named characters at a time. And that's nice for balance because it means they can make them better without worrying that you take the best best named character from here and the best named character from there and put them together. That is always a concern for balance reasons is like just take the best of everything and congratulations you've won. <laughs> 
So we can get into the lore of the different Space Marine chapters and then move our way into how you may want to play them in a game if you're into a certain part of them. It's important to know, though, that this isn't that serious. This is not a life-altering decision. Don't worry too much. <laughs> Just paint your models what you like. Yeah. My go-to answer would be there are things called successor chapters, which is basically GW's way of saying make up your own story, make your own Sonic OC fanfic, Donut steal and just enjoy yourself and that's probably what i would tell you to do even if you go for like one of the canon colors or something just make them your own it'll make you happy because you can just start having your own stories with them and all good all right so like successor chapters are not the ultramarines or even the like other special sub faction chapter things like blood angels or death watch wow that's actually like a super trap question <laughs> get wrecked lore nerd you didn't even mean to do that <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm gigabrain over here. Let's talk about what a chapter is. Maybe you're getting in and you just want like the basic rundown. Yeah. Space Marines are made up of chapters. Each one of them in lore, because lore is very stupid and the British don't understand numbers, is made up of a maximum of 1,000 Marines. Yes. In an interplanetary empire, you only have a thousand dudes to take care of your part of the domain. And not just that. It's also one that's been around for 40,000 years. Well. Well, well, okay, 10,000 years with caveats, but like still 10,000 years, multiple planets, thousand people. Let's just ignore that. <laughs> And assume that that's a translation error. So the chapters all tend to have themes to them. The White Scars are really fast. Yeah, zoom, zoom. The Ultramarines are ultra tactical. The Imperial Fists like walls. The Iron Hands have iron hands. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> there's no way we're getting away from a little bit of memory here. No, 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 no. <laughs> Lore is stupid. I say this as someone who loves lore. You just have to get used to it. If you take it too seriously, you'll die. Yeah. And I mean, as much as it is like dumb, there's some fun to that aspect. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's more fun because it's dumb. Yeah, exactly. The stupid things is why it's so fun. But I'm just saying, if you're new, don't take it overly serious. You're going to be very upset. <laughs> But chapters are a whole deal. We start out with the Space Marines 10,000 years ago had legions. Half of them fought the other half in an event called the Horus Heresy. Half of them go off to chaos. The other half, which is only nine big legions of hundreds of thousands of dudes, stay loyal and then get split up because of the Codex Astartes made by Rebute Gilliman and more specific lore I'm not getting into. Okay, that does answer a bit of my questions that I've had for a while because the Gladius Task Force has been now of like why is it only 10,000 years that they're talking about the codex yes so it was made as like a safety precaution of hey maybe owning a hundred thousand men under your banner is too good when they're all super soldiers let's try a thousand yeah all right yeah there's <laughs> like i said translation error is i'm, I'm going with that one <laughs> The general rule of thumb with GW is do not focus on the numbers. They will just make you mad if you start thinking logically. The thing that irritates me the most is like, it's not the specific numbers because I did physics. We piss off mathematicians all the fucking time because everything's just like, eh, roughly about 100,000, right? But even we were like, okay, keep to the right magnitude. Yeah, for a physicist, <laughs> 100,000 equals 800,562. Those are the same number. So it's all 100,000-ish. Yeah, but for GW... 10 million and 100,000 are the same number. Yeah, which is, uh, you know, it's a, a framing that you gotta get used to. <laughs> but all right, so we've got a bunch of chapters now, and it's more than just a nine or 20 or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so nine of them go on to be what are, to my knowledge, called the first founding chapters. Don't, don't get at me, Space Marine nerds. All of the other ones that had to be forced off because you've got more than a thousand guys left are called successor chapters, which are basically a forked branch branch of one of the originals. Oh, okay. New ones can be made, but again, they're locked to the cap of a thousand once they're made. Right. And then like you said, like there's exceptions here and there and whatever. But yeah, like, yeah. And there's exceptions to the rules, the whole Black Templars joke. Not getting so deep into it at the moment, but. Of the original ones, you have the Ultramarines, also known as the Smurfs or 50 other slang terms to make fun of them. They are the poster children of 40K. It's the first thing you saw when you got into it. There's the Imperial Fists. They're yellow and really boring. I mean, this is not going to be me making fun of them all. <laughs> 
Wow. They're experts in defensive warfare. Okay. They like building citadels and turtling up. Like the Romans, we aggressively build forts. Yeah, which is weird because the Ultramarines have the Roman theme. <laughs> But I guess so do the Emperor's Spears or whatever they're called. There's probably like a hundred successor chapters that all have Roman themes. Yeah, I think they're Imperial Fist. They might be Ultramarine. I don't know. I didn't read their books, but you get the point. Not important right now. There's the Iron Hands who have Iron Hands. And? Then there's the Raven Guard. They're sneaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the Salamanders. They're the goody two-shoes as long as it's not an elf child that they burn alive. It was just a prank. Are they actually like just Xenos Hunters? No, I... It's just a famous event where they burned a bunch of kids. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, I thought there was one of the other ones that was like, we kill all Xenos. No, the Salamanders, the joke is they're supposed to be the humanitarian friendly ones. The one you go, oh, thank God it was the Salamanders and not some crazy chapter who showed up. But they're still in 40k. Yeah, they still had to have their derp moment. Fair enough, fair enough. And then the White Scars. The White Scars are fast and they have a whole Mongolian theme. Then you've got the other ones that are the base original nine. We've named six of them. The other three are Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Space Wolves. We're not going to talk about those three very much today. Yeah, because those ones and Black Templars and Death Watch have like their own books that are going to be a thing. Like they're super special. They're extra super duper special snowflakes. Each of them gets a whole book on top of the original book. So they're just filled to the brim with lore stuff. We're not really going to get too much into them, but the Blood Angels are vampire dudes. They're also pretty cool, honestly. The Dark Angels, I have slowly become a fan of just because of Lionel Johnson's return actually having a very good lore book attached to it, and I think the idea of the Fallen becoming the Risen is an interesting plot point, but, like, they're the edgy knights. We'll see if they, uh actually continue with the whole changing thing or if they're just going to still be failures but the space wolves are vikings obsessed with like sagas and building your name and building up your story and also they have a very strong wolf motif very very strong wolf motif cute little puppies <laughs> and then there's successor <laughs> chapters there is one that actually gets a whole book of extra stuff because they have a ton of lore it's the black templars they're crusaders through and through that's all they are they're the fanatical we're on crusade crusading yeah they're always on crusade then you've got the death watch which is not a chapter it's an organization that gets into a whole bunch of stuff we're not getting into right now but the death watch is essentially where you have a bunch of space marines get sent off to special anti-alien boot camp and they learn how to kill aliens real good. Kill teams. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Okay, so and then like the whole thing that you were talking about, like you can choose a bunch of other successors or make your own. <laughs> yes, you could make your own. It does not matter. There's Crimson Fists are an Imperial Fist successor. The Minotaurs are another one. What the fuck was that one Red Wings one? That was one for, it's apparently in some Blood Angels. It gets mentioned once in some book. So now it's a canon successor chapter. I still hate you for that. <laughs> I knew it was a trap. They're never going to get another Stanley Cup. You have to get over it. <laughs> we had our run. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you know, you got to think of the octopuses. <laughs> that's going to take so much explaining to anyone who doesn't know hockey. I'm just imagining what Borrelia is going to have to type into Google right now because I'm not explaining it. <laughs> I'm not explaining it either. It, do it needs no explanation. What does octopuses have to do with hockey? <laughs> Oh boy, are you about to find out some weird shit. That's <laughs> about right. <laughs> All right, so for an example of a successor chapter that you can just make up out of the blue. Yeah. For our Spiteful Idiot Army that we talked about, there's a project that I've been working on. We mentioned it on a previous episode, but I am making a Space Marine Army that is based off of the lore of being all Primaris, made with traitor gene seed, because Call is a sussy baka. I hate that this is your explanation for it, but continue. <laughs> So they're all Alpha Legion. I haven't decided on a good name for it yet, but I'm going to give them a great, super obvious name that's in the style of the other ones GW made, the Sons of the Phoenix, for the totally not an Emperor's Children one. Right. Yeah, I just, I keep thinking of like, so there's a stupid little game that's basically like every character name has the spoiler, like that's the name of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to be like Alpha Legion Traders. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
that's my chapter name. They're super loyal. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those that there's, I don't know, there's like a wiki with like a hundred fucking successor chapters listed and you can also just make your own. Or you could just not care about lore, but then you're probably not here. It's fair. So that's the basic rundown of chapters themselves at a billion foot view as fast as we can go through it. Right. Because you could literally watch a five hour video just explaining what we just said, but in actual 40k level detail. There's probably a whole series of loot and videos you can go watch on that. Yeah, for like each sub chapter and fucking whatever. But the important thing being that there are named character models that can have a chapter keyword. If you play them, you have to play that chapter chapter. Otherwise, go wild. Have fun. So one of the main points of picking your chapter is trying to identify with your faction and your models, trying to make them truly your guys. Yeah, gain an emotional attachment to it. So while you are not locked to a certain sub-faction by picking a certain chapter, you will most likely be more attached to certain sub-factions depending on which chapter you picked because it depends on your taste. Right. If you like Ravenguard, you like sneaky stuff. Therefore, you probably like a detachment that gives you bonuses for sneaky stuff. Which, spoiler alert, there are detachments that try to do broad things, and one of them being sneaky. The Space Marine Codex has seven detachments. There are six Codex compliant chapters that are represented within it for the most part for the original cast, as it were. But of course, like all the successor chapters also fall in here, right? Okay. Each of these technically could be pointed as closest to one of the original six and then the seventh one is first company which is just hey terminators are the big thing this edition so first company is where everyone puts their terminators when you have a chapter so we'll just name a detachment that so if you were let's say a fan of ultramarines you really like their lore rebuta gilliman's pretty cool poster children it's how you got in nothing wrong with vanilla yeah then the one that is most targeting you is the Gladius Task Force. But again, Ultramarines are not locked to a certain way of playing. Technically, all Marines should be smart enough, no matter what chapter they're from, to know that in certain battles, they should use certain tactics. Right, and every chapter is going to have access to what they need to have, like, a valid fighting force, you know? So, like, yeah, you might be particularly good at being sneaky, but that doesn't mean you can't put an artillery on the line and fucking blow somebody up. Yeah, and just because you're the Imperial Fist and you're, like, known for being able to turtle up and hold a fortress, it doesn't mean that you don't need your own covert ops-type units that can go off on a mission when required. They're not just going to lose a war because they refuse to have someone sneaky because it's not in their identity. Yeah. No, that's uh, very much the orc way of thinking, and uh, shockingly, space marines are slightly smarter than orcs. Only slightly, depending on the book. <laughs> Yeah, the Gladius Task Force being the call out to Codex Astartes with like, hey, we can be smart and we can make battle tactics on the fly kind of thing. Yeah, it is one that is aimed more toward the Ultramarines ideal. But again, none of these are locked to any specific one. So it's got doctrines that you, over the course of the game, choose when to trigger them. It's a really strong sub-faction too, which is why basically everybody uses this as their default backup for whatever they were planning to play. You can't really go wrong. Especially because the doctrines, one of them is you can shoot when you advance. Another one is shoot and charge if you fell back. And then the third one is advance and charge. So like they're just good things to have access to at different points in the game, no matter what your list is. So Gladius Task Force is very all-rounder, right? You could have a chaplain with jump pack with his jump pack assault intercessors. And then on the other side of the board, you've got one of your dread knots and you've got land raider full of some terminators like everything can be together here this is a nice intro like basic all-rounder list is happy and at home in this detachment yeah very much i think there is going to be some benefit for having like leaders with a unit in general space brains just has very good leading yeah with a lot of other factions not as potent as it is in space brains if i'm being honest but maybe that changes with 
their codices. Right, but it's generally good in Space Marines, and I think Gladius Task Force helps promote that already good thing to be even better. And honestly, if you're learning the faction, this is probably the one I would say, like, learn this. Like, use this as your learning place, because it's very adaptable. It will help when you screw up tactically. You can use this to get out of your jam. It also can help, like, if you did something and you think back and you go, oh, last turn, I should have used Tactical Doctrine. Then you can know in the future, like, hey, in that scenario, use Tactical Doctrine. That's true. <laughs> and it also helps that because it's all-rounder, it really doesn't care what you've collected. Like, if you just have your Leviathan box models and, like, maybe you bought a intro set or something, a starter set, who knows? Whatever you have, it should work. And it's to the point that I think every stratagem works with everything. You can have infantry, vehicles, it'll work. And then let's say you were Imperial Fists and your French vanilla ice cream. Fancy. So the Imperial Fists are more focused on their stay stationary and get better wounding and the basically wanting to be a slow stationary gun line type turtle up type detachment. Yeah, very much around the uh, heavy keyword. It works well from an identity standpoint for if you're Imperial Fists, but like a lot of the heavy armor focused chapters in lore will be right at home here. It's not a super strong detachment, but if you want to play something flavorful, it's solid if you want to play like a slow gun line. Or if you just like really like Gravis armor. I love Gravis armor. Which that is one of the things that I'm interested to hear a little bit about the lore from you of like, we've got the different armor types, the Gravis, Tacticus, and Phobos, and Terminator. Are those locked to like chapters? No. So certain chapters will be more prone to using certain ones. Gravis is very heavy, slow, heavy firepower. So Imperial Fist is famous for using a lot of it. Iron Hands would be fond of it. Salamanders would be fond of it. Whereas Phobos is the sneak fast one so raven guard like it white scars probably are right at home with it even though they're more about speed than sneakiness but it happens to work well for both lets you advance deploying stuff okay so it, it is really one of those like the fact that the anvil siege sub faction is more gravis is again one of those like you're gonna be leaning towards these chapters but it doesn't mean that like you have to be those chapters and that's why i think 10th edition did a really good job with this like i can read these and clearly go this chapter is most like this sub-faction. The sub-faction was clearly made as the one to fill in this chapter's hole. But at the same time, they're not so hyper-focused on one joke of that chapter. Like, the old Imperial Fist one had to deal with fortifications. It's very much like a caricature of what the memeiest parts were. Yeah, and they were only allowed to work with bolters. So, I really like how these ones work, especially because, like, Wall Gladius, yes, it is the one that is most like Ultramarines because it's the all-rounder tactics on the fly thing it's also the index detachment for a reason yeah it is what a space marine at its core is supposed to be lore wise the anvil siege force yes it is more imperial fist but there is no reason a salamander unit would not use this all right for anvil siege what kind of units do we want to have we talked about it already gravis 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 is cool a lot of gravis units tend to be shootier other than aggressors can slap pretty hard it just tends to work well here but at the same time like any Anything with a good gun platform, so like, you could play your tanks here just fine. Just park them in the back, remain stationary, you get your heavy bonus, you get your one to the wound roll, it's just all nice and happy. It's very much like, if you have heavy weapons, this is a good option for you. <laughs> Even if you don't have heavy weapons, giving your stuff heavy is nice. That's true, yeah. I could see wanting to do like a plasma heavy gun line with it. There's several places you could do that, but this is one of them. Like if you want to play some hell blasters park them in the back and you know get a bonus for it yeah i mean i was originally thinking like you know your devastator squad is like the hey get big gun <laughs> If you want to play the Desolation Squad with your meme hilarious rocket launcher. Yes, that's another. I was trying to not point that one out. But we can play with it. Look at it. Enhance. <laughs> Yeah, really, it's just like, if you're having units that have good ranged weapons that can take advantage of heavy, that can take advantage of remaining stationary. So, moving on to the one that is, uh, the one that gets made fun of the most. Oh, you don't say. Because it is <laughs> very obviously Iron Hands, and it's also very strong. It's the Iron Storm Spearhead, it's all vehicle focused, which is technically Iron Hands' main shtick. Dreadnoughts are quite good, so playing a lot of them when they're vehicles in a vehicle buffing detachment is very strong 
strong. So a lot of people joke like, haha, you're playing blue iron hands and stuff when you're playing your ultramarines and you're playing them in iron storm. It's a dated joke I would not do to someone and would advise against doing to people because I despise the idea that if you accidentally painted them with the wrong color, you can only play a sixth of what you bought. Right. I mean, like, it's kind of funny in like a dumb way, but like we said before, you're going to have vehicles in all of your chapters. And if you want to play a vehicle heavy list with some tech marines and stuff like that, Iron Storm Spearhead seems good. Who named it? I sure we can get to that but what the fuck is been hard by Narek so I forgot you aren't used to audiobooks or anything but from my I've never looked up like what it's based on but by Narek is essentially talking in code it's an ad mechy thing it's a talk to the machine spirit make the computer work you're talking in tech oh okay talking in tech it's not the threatening the computer of you better work this time or I'm gonna hit you no it's whatever they do whenever they don't want to explain what's happening they go the tech priest is talking in binaric to the machine oh it's the i'm making shit up because i don't know but hopefully it'll just fix itself and i'll look like i'm smart yeah that's essentially what it gets used as lore wise because i was like throughout everything in this it's scattered throughout and it just sounds like y'all used magic (laughs) yeah you don't like (laughs) cycling data geist inloads yeah right what the fuck are you talking about Jerking off a bunch of data ghosts to get their loads. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so stupid. <laughs> you gotta precogn, you gotta precogitate their firing solution before you take their inloads. We can't keep half of this, but it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, it could, it, it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, man, I got to ask Brad this one because like, is it just this codex having some fun because it couldn't figure out what to actually put in this like lore for the tech priest? No, you had written the note like, what the fuck is Binaric? And I'm like, how do you not know? And I'm like, I guess you don't really read that many lore books, but like, it's <laughs> essentially just used for the guy is talking to the machine in code. Okay. It fits with this detachment really well. <laughs> I get it, but... (laughs) <laughs> but yes, it's a very strong detachment because it buffs strong units with a pretty good buff. Iron Hands in general has very little lore. It will often be the butt of jokes simply because it's very rare that you are a fan of Iron Hands. You are a fan of winning and Iron Hands tend to be good. Yeah. So with the Iron Storm, it's pretty obvious. Like... <laughs> you don't say. Do you like tech marines? Do you like vehicles? <laughs> Well, <laughs> choose those and, and dreadnoughts. Honestly, I like the idea of like, go for like a pair of tech marines. Honestly, let's go with like four dreads and then like two, three tanks. And then I still would put in some like, you need something in front of all this, although you could just use the dreadnoughts, but you need something in front of all this. So like, then we just do some, I don't know, uh, heavy intercessors because I'm a Gravis boy, or you could go with something that wants to get more into melee. Maybe you have some terminators here just to go park on on mid yeah there's some good options to round out your lists especially at 2000 points but i think the core you're gonna be using tech marines and dreadnoughts and maybe some some tanks or something like that you can't really get away from that like that's why you have chosen this instead of the other sub factions iron storm works very well when you have high quality shots so anything like that if you have a couple important shots like some meltas or las cannons or whatever or or you've got, you know, a big melee weapon, which again, Redemptor Fist, Brutalis Claws. I was going to say, yeah, Brutalis can do some good stuff on that one. These are the things you want. So it's kind of self-explanatory, but there you go. That's the gist of what we want in an Iron Storm collection. If you're a fan of a slower marine chapter, like you just have a bunch of heavier weapons and stuff, you probably have a good collection to play Iron Storm. Yeah, I think so. Then Salamanders, the fire in the flame you talked about iron storm spearhead being a bad name firestorm assault force is my least favorite name it is the worst that one this firestorm assault what the fuck man (laughs) so i would like to shout out gw for not naming this salamanders and for separating it right yeah i know that is great but at the same time we can do better than firestorm assault force which sounds like the 45th season of power rangers yeah kind of and like previously you were naming things after chapters which had 
had already been named and like they've got some dumb names but all right fine and a lot of overlapping words which is another annoyance but like we did not when we were redoing these you could start from complete scratch and like go to a dictionary and a thesaurus and like there's a lot of english words out there and you don't even have to stick to english words like by (laughs) now make shit up the point is we didn't need Ironstorm and Firestorm right next to each other in a codex. Don't forget, our next one's going to have Storm in it as well. <laughs> You're right. And there's a lot of them that are Blank Force or Spearhead. I think literally all of them are either Force or Spearhead. I think so, yeah. First Company, I guess, isn't. Oh, no, it's First Company Task Force. It still is. Yeah, it still is. They had to throw that on there. <laughs> So, naming conventions aside, Firestorm Assault Force. Look, do you like flamers? You probably already picked Salamanders or someone that you said is a Salamander successor. I don't blame you. Flamers are amazing. I play Thousand Suns. And Zinch. Yeah. Firestorm Assault Force is kind of built around the idea that you're probably packing a bunch of flamers. It does other stuff where, like, because flamers are short range, it does some transport stuff so that you can drive up real close, hop out, and blast them with fire. I was going to say, there is actually actually quite a bit of transport related things and that's because you're supposed to get close with your flamers and it's nice and it shows caring honestly of like you didn't just slap on literally everything talks about like flamers meltas and stuff like that right they thought about like if you had an army that has way too many flamers to be correct (laughs) how would you compensate well i probably have to put them all in transports to get them close enough to use these flamers right like there's there's a downside how do we make it not as bad and yeah just toss them in transports and they'll move up ahead so i appreciate that a lot but again salamanders could be a lot of things in here this one is clearly meant for them their enhancements it's like they forgot that it's not strictly salamanders and it makes a lot of references to things that are like all about forging stuff in fire and stuff when that's like salamanders are these smiths oh okay i didn't get that but like i did notice that there was a lot of the like war tempered and forged and like yeah it vulcan is a smith i mean technically so was ferris for all three seconds he's a character in a lot of air quotes there but anyway so if we want to play firestorm i know i said flamers 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 but like the infernus marines just came out and they're a really solid like excuse right they're very cheap to get a hold of you could have like 60 of them for a very low price right now on ebay oh yeah i didn't i mean i didn't know that but it kind of makes sense they're the junker like last edition it was assault intercessors were dime a dozen because they were in every intro set and that's the infernus marines this time yeah right so infernus marines aggressors have flamers if you want to go meltas then you can go with things like your eradicators man you got dry knots with your heavy flamers yeah you could go that route like that still exists man and i could see it from like a visual in that like uh nice vortho sense but i can envision like you've got some guys with flamers up front and then the dreadnought in the back going over their heads with the massive flamer. I'm like, I'm here for that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really get the flamers. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that. A well-rounded list still works very well here. And you could take advantage of some of the transport shenanigans that the stratagems are letting you do and like try and go a bit faster and tactical on that. To be fair, like if we're getting a little gamey with it, the things to focus on is weapons where an extra strength does a lot. So like even your intercessors, if you get a bolter up to strength five, that changes a lot of math against a lot of armies infantry. So maybe like basic intercessors, totally fine here, uh, which rare to say. <laughs> That is something that I hadn't really thought about, but it does give a strength, so... Even heavy intercessors go from strength 5 to strength 6, which is a ton of breakpoints, too. Yeah, there is definitely something to play around with on that one. Yeah, there's a lot of things you could just look at from a data sheet standpoint to see if it's good here. But, like, obviously a lot of people just want to play with flamers here. Well, I mean, you've got a stratagem that gives your flamers devastating wounds, like... Yeah, use that. It's good. You need at least one unit that's got some flamers when you're playing this sub faction whether you want to get cute and fancy with the other stuff have at least one unit of good flamers <laughs> Yeah, Stormlance Task Force. Very unique naming. This one is, uh, gotta go fast. Yeah, so they even have their ability called Lightning Assault. Blitzkrieg was taken, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's got dangerous connotations. <laughs> 
Uh, this one has the unfortunate downside of you're forced to see how the British attempt to spell the word maneuver. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's tough because, like... It's already a poorly spelled word. Like, maneuver is an awful word to begin with. And then the British were like, this needs a random O-E-U in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody forgot what word they were spelling <laughs> and just started <laughs> saying vowels. <laughs> like, <laughs> think, I gotta think of the next letter. Give me a moment. An O. <laughs> Let me think some more. I want to buy an E. <laughs> when someone asks you to spell something and you start it outright and then you just start saying random letters to see how long it takes them to catch on. <laughs> <laughs> you get to V and the other person's like, the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> this doesn't look right at all. Yeah. <laughs> Manovers. <laughs> A tromopoline. <laughs> <laughs> all right so lightning assault advance and charge yeah it, it's white scars might have some idea on what this one is uh most commonly related to that said this gets into the whole like it could be for anybody thing blood angels would be just as happy for the go fast and get into melee type play style of this detachment okay so let's be honest space marines do pretty well in hand-to-hand -hand combat yeah just in general they have a chain sword for a reason yeah it's not that unreasonable to just be like, yeah, I'm just going to charge up ahead and get into melee combat and kill you with chainswords. Now, if I was a Gravis-focused individual, which I am, I may not have much interest in this <laughs> as I've got these slow, dirtily boys and trying to make them constantly run feels cruel. <laughs> That's fair. I do want a slight annoyance that I have. Two of the four enhancements are only useful on one thing. Yeah. And there's also, I think, two or three of the stratagems that are very focused on that as well. So it's like you get the chaplain on bike and then, oh, yeah, the invader ATV and outrider squad can be used on this strategy. This gets into the problem of like it's supposed to be based around fast vehicles. There are very few updated models on fast vehicles and space marines. That's the three. You named them all. I get it. I get it. It's just, you know, one of those, like, I see this really cool sub-faction, Stormlands, advance and charge. Let's do it. Oh, I have to take a chaplain on bike. <laughs> Which, I mean, most likely people that are playing that for that reason have those models, right? Yeah, it is one of the things, though, that is an example of not done as well. I feel like it could have been broadened slightly. Like, the Anvil Siege Force is a lot better than its 9th edition equivalent. It's not all, like, bolter locked and stuff. They were like, all right, what's the general spirit? The Stormlands Task Force, it's fine if you are legitimately, like, I want to play a bunch of bikes. And, like, whether you're White Scars or you're a successor who just has a bike fetish you've got your harley davison gang right yeah this is the one <laughs> You're happy, but like it should have probably been a little more broad on what it would work on so that you could have a higher chance of wanting to look at this when you were playing any old army. I mean, you get the advance and charge, so like... If you want to play jump pack marines, pretty solid. Yeah. If you're here and you're using the sub-faction, a good amount of it is for the bikes. A good portion of its strength lies in bikes. Yeah, and storm speeders. Storm speeders are probably... This is your home for them if you're one of the five fans of that <laughs> wow so yeah like bikes storm speeders the things white scars will want to run and then some jump pack models would get some use here i think because you can be very mobile and get an advance and charge and do some shenanigans i think this is the only one that specifically calls out flying vehicles but uh just don't play those in tent well you mean aircraft specifically vehicles with flying includes the storm speeder true okay I got nothing else. Yeah, I got nothing else for Stormlands. <laughs> well, like I said, man, it's it's a very specific one, but all right, Vanguard Spearhead. It's the sneaky detachment, which is essentially Phobos units, which is a short list. Yeah. And scouts, I guess. They added scouts, which to be fair, does broaden it because you could argue like that you're the intro squad. Like when you play this, you're playing your fresh recruits and it's a scout heavy list with some Phobos guys supporting them to keep the kids alive. Yeah, right. Like these are the vets that are kind of taking care of the newbies. I actually just kind of sold myself 
on air just now for a different way to play Vanguard Spearhead. When I was fully planning on being a little annoyed with how very focused it is on Phobos type stuff. I mean, it is very much a sneaky, let's have like actual stealth and like cutting off like the, the weak parts of armies and that kind of stuff. I mean, I think it's cool. It's it's the blood axes. Blood axes are awesome. I generally like Phobos stuff. It's one of my favorite aesthetics. Like I prefer the, the more Master Chief style look than the giant hulking guy who can't lift his arms above his shoulder. <laughs> Scratch your back. <laughs> I dare you put on your actual suit alone. <laughs> put a shirt on. Can you do it? Can you touch your toes? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah, there's, there's the other end of just being so fat that like you can't do any of those things anyways. If I roll my right shoulder, it makes a sweet cracking noise. I'm falling apart. Welcome to your early 30s. I've heard it gets worse. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fun times ahead. So the Shadow Masters, right. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there is some fun. I mean, one of the ones being like the stratagem is guerrilla tactics. That kind of calls out to me like you can do any successor chapter you want. Don't worry about paint schemes. Call it the guerrilla tactics. It does a job well. If you're on it, then I should have been now that I'm thinking about it. I think Stormlance is kind of the really bad one of the bunch for being too hyper focused on like a couple units. Yeah, Vanguard definitely is very Phobos, but like you can give a uh, ghost we've cloaked to, to somebody. That's good fun. Harry just wanted to confirm for everyone he did read the codex before the episode started. That was him showing off to me personally as we're sitting here. <laughs> hey man, there was like there was four or five things that when I read this, I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. I got to put it in the episode, okay? <laughs> I like Space Marines too. Eric learned all about them this week. You mean today? <laughs> uh, wait, what? I've, I've been dedicated to making this episode as good as possible. Honestly, the idea of a scout heavy list is really really fun now that I like thought this up mid episode. So there you go. That's a fun one. But just Phobos in general looks so good. Having a reason to play a bunch of it. I love Eliminators. The cloaked sniper look. God, that's hot. It's pretty cool. Playing a bunch of Eliminators, your incursors or infiltrators for holding points. If you're a fan of the Ripley suit, you could play the Invictor Tactical War suit. I was just going to ask, what's your thoughts on the Invictor? <laughs> it falls under my standard thoughts of like, this is a very stupid vehicle, but I'm okay with that. It looks like a guard vehicle. If you swap the Space Marine for a guard, I am 100% on board with that vehicle's design. And I feel like that's a very common thing people have said. Yeah, okay, okay. Feels a little silly to be a an open frame cockpit it gets a little baby carrier -y. it's got the same baby carrier aesthetic to me where it's like i agree it's dumb but i still like it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Phobos, this is what we're here for. Things that are hypermobile too work really well with Shadow Masters, the ability. Anyone who can like properly get to a point where they can still be in shooting range, but the opponent will not be able to get within 12 of them before their shooting phase. So you get your bonus. So depending how you play them, you could do stuff like Inceptors. I was just looking up which one is. <laughs> It's the speedy ones. Which one is Not that? Interceptor. That's a gray knight. Inceptors, Eric. Yep. I screw that up. I don't think it'll ever change. And they just keep making it worse. <laughs> the IN category is getting quite long in Space Marines. It's like the storm category. Yeah. Good sub-faction naming. They took away some of our lieutenant memes. It's not as funny as it used to be. We don't have 14 data sheets anymore. Right. Let's move on to the first company task force. Okay. So Eric isn't really aware of how companies work within a chapter, and I don't want to give a long when an explanation that will be half wrong. <laughs> But essentially, a chapter is made up of 10, I think, companies, so 100 people each-ish, which always makes this sound dumber when you realize what the implications are with some of these. Yeah, but, like, actual armies have those subdivisions that, like, you know, I get it. So the first company is the Veteran Company, which is who gets Terminators in normal Space Marine armies, not special offshoots like Grey Knights who are like, haha, we give everyone Terminator armor, idiots. Which, you know, it's one of those, like, reading through these, first company seems pretty cool. Maybe slightly biased <laughs> with the whole Terminator thing. <laughs> So if you're playing Grey Knights and you're sick of having shitty rules... I'll just play First Company. Honestly, that's not a bad idea. We're the Silver Skulls, our chapter masters, <laughs> Trays in the Infinite. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
My lich guards. I mean, my vanguard vets. Please. No inquisitor. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is fine. So, like, first company task force, Terminators, and, like, I don't know, I guess it seemed like they're supposed to be the veterans, the old, I know everything. That's essentially what it is. If you want to play that for the day, there you go. And it's very chapter agnostic. This is meant to work with all of the chapters. I mean, from a meta perspective, the reason it's here is because the brand new shiny thing they want you to buy is Terminators. Here is a detachment focused on the thing you could go buy right now on the shelf. Yeah, for first company, I mean, it's... Terminators, and you also get the veterans. Yeah, the Stern Guards are sweet. I love that model. Blade Guards are sweet. Everyone loves the Blade Guards, though. Blade Guards are just classics. They are probably like top three Marines, looks wise, which should be an episode one day. But uh, yeah, Vanguard Vets are old and ugly. <laughs> Wow. We can skip them in this list, but I guess if you have a bunch, here's your excuse. You can still have the rest of your army rounded out to be a not just Terminator list, but you're playing Terminators. It's a very well-rounded bonus you get. It's just, it's not very strong. I have no real issue with First Company Task Force, other than the name sucks still. But I have no real issue with the First Company, other than like, yes, it's lower power. But it's not that bad, especially because it's the same seventh and some of us only got five and one of them was a joke yeah but there's some pretty cool stuff that you're going to be doing with those terminators and blade guard vats and again slight bias from the gray knight player that enjoys terminators it's cool to see terminators getting some love from space marines when it's like but why would i play that over like the rest of my power armor well because it's cooler <laughs> And First Company really lets you go, yes, it is cooler. And, you know, the detachment rule does help a bit. All right, we're getting a little rambly here. We've gone through seven different sub-factions after explaining Space Marine lore as quickly as I could. There's so much of it. It's really hard to condense. It is, and uh, there's a lot of models, a lot of sub-factions, so there's a lot to talk about. We did hit the highlights, though. I feel like a lot of people's brains are probably cooked by this point, though, so let's just end it here for the week, and hopefully a lot of your basic questions about Space Marines and, like, which chapter you want to play, which sub-faction is right for your chapter. All of that should hopefully be easier if you're new. And well, you probably already knew it if you weren't, but we'll pretend we were useful. <laughs> Right. And I think we'll probably do some more like interesting list specific things in the future. Yeah, I didn't want to make this even longer by doing like an example list for each of these. And like we didn't even get into Black Templars, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Space Wolves. All of those we'll probably cover on their own once they get their supplements and we're in the mood to do them probably several months after they come out. Probably. <laughs> But, uh, but there's a lot of other actual factions that we should probably cover too, rather than coming back to Space Marines to explain the special or snowflakes. We'll get to it all eventually. All right, but that does it for us this week. Let's get out of here. Sounds good.